In this lecture, I'm going to sort of define, discuss, and identify direct and digital marketing and their rapid growth and benefits to customers and companies. Also sort of explain how companies have responded to the internet and the digital age with various online marketing strategies and tools. The lecture will look at how companies have used social media and mobile marketing to engage consumers and create what we like to call a brand community. Now, it's also important for students to understand that any lecture or textbook that includes basically a discussion of technological tools will almost always be outdated even before the lecture or the textbook is published. Why? Because technology keeps moving forward. So what should you take away from a lecture like this? Well, that's the strategic framework that's introduced. Technology, you have to remember, is just a tool to implement strategy. So as an example, having products delivered to one's house is as old as, well, basically business. I mean, in the 1950s, people got milk delivered home by a milkman, and today it gets delivered by an online shopper. And who knows, maybe in a few years, it will be a drone or a robot. But in all cases, it's the same basic strategy as use. Customers place an order and the business uses a competitive advantage of delivering the product to the customer's home. The difference is the tool for taking the order and delivering the order, but not the competitive advantage strategy of home delivery. Direct and digital marketing have become the fastest growing forms of marketing. Direct marketing continues to become a more internet based and digital direct marketing is claiming a surging share of marketing spending ad money. Now, digital and direct marketing involve engaging directly with targeted individual consumers and customer communities with a goal of both obtaining immediate responses and building lasting relationships. Companies use direct marketing to basically tailor their offerings and content to the needs and interests of a narrowly defined segment of individual buyers. In this way, they build customer engagement, brand communities, and sales. Now, most companies still use direct marketing as a supplemental channel or medium. For example, Walmart and Target sell the majority of their merchandise off the shelves, but they also sell through online catalogs and social media pages. However, there is a growing number of companies today that basically only use direct and digital marketing, and they're more than just supplemental. There is their primary advertising channel. They constitute this model of doing business without having direct contact. Now, firms employing this direct model may use this model as their only approach. For example, online travel agencies such as Priceline.com sells its services exclusively through online mobile and social media channels. Along with other online competitors, Priceline.com has pretty much driven the traditional brick and mortar travel agency out of existence. Now, finally, as marketers adopt digital, how this concept is defined, the sub areas and basic technology is still evolving. You can expect to see different names for the same concepts until basically a common accepted terms and definitions have been agreed upon. Now, for this lecture, I'm going to be using digital marketing as the broader concept and online and mobile as sub areas, including things like web pages. Additionally, concepts like direct marketing do have two definitions. Now, the one that you see on your screen is sort of the retail definition, but it can also refer to a channel or distribution. Now, I covered that in a different lecture. The definitions I've picked here are some of the more common definitions that are being used out there and probably one of the best ones to sort of get started with, you might want to say. For buyers, direct and digital marketing are convenient, easy, and basically private. Although we do know that there are some issues with that these days. But for the most part, what I do in my house in front of my computer screen is only seen by me, not by my neighbors who may be there with me. Now, they give the buyer somewhere and anytime access to almost unlimited assortment of goods. They can access a wealth of products and knowledge and buying information. Now, through direct marketing, buyers can interact with sellers by phone or on the seller's website or their app via their smartphone or even their TV screens, basically anywhere they can access an app. It gives the buyer freedom to create exactly the configuration of information and products or services they want and then order them on the spot. 
Finally, for consumers who want it, digital marketing through online, mobile, and social media also provides a sense of brand engagement and community. Now, for the sellers, direct marketing often provides a low-cost, efficient, speedy alternative for reaching their markets. Because of the one-on-one -on -one nature of direct marketing, companies can interact with customers by phone, online, through chats. This allows the companies to learn more about their customers' needs. Companies then can personalize their products and services to specific customers' taste. Now, direct and digital marketing also offer sellers this greater flexibility. They let marketers make, you know, basically ongoing adjustments to prices and programs or make immediate, timely and personal announcements that in the past could have taken weeks, even months to do. Now this can be done in a matter of hours or less. You can kind of split the main forms of direct and digital marketing into traditional and new digital marketing tools. Traditional tools are still heavily used and extremely important in most firms' direct marketing efforts. However, we also have to acknowledge in recent years, an amazing new set of digital direct marketing tools have burst onto the marketing scene. It's kind of interesting when I talk to students and that depending on when you grow up will depend on which tool tends to be more favored. But both groups must learn to embrace the opposite, meaning as people who are in direct and social media marketing need to understand that traditional direct marketing tools such as infomercials and kiosks are still extremely important to incorporate within your strategy. And those who are more on the traditional side really need to understand more about social media and online videos and the importance they play in directly reaching your consumers. The digital age has fundamentally changed customers' notions of convenience, speed, price, product information, basically their brand interactions. As a result, it's given marketers a whole new way to create customer value, to engage their customers and basically build customer relationships. Almost all major companies have some sort of online presence. Now, some companies only operate online, I mean, there's a huge wide variety from e-tailoring to search engines to, I don't know, com content sites to online social media. Now, because social and digital media is the fastest growing forms of direct marketing, we're going to take a look at those first. The thing to remember is that digital marketing tools engage directly with consumers anywhere, anytime via consumers' digital devices. This includes things such as websites, online videos, emails, blogs, mobile apps, and there's still many more new developing digital platforms on a daily basis. From a previous lecture, I introduced omni-channel marketing, but let's kind of do a quick review. Now remember, omni-channel and multi-channel are not, in fact, the same thing. They're similar, but not the same. The signal channel, sort of the legacy that we have right now, customers experience a single type of touch point because retailers have basically a single type of touch point. Now, this is quickly fading from today's marketplace as a viable channel, but smaller businesses that have long history, such as maybe a restaurant or a bakery, may still be using a single channel, but even these businesses have moved to more of a multi-channel, sort of the reality. The customer sees touch points, but they tend to see them as acting independently. Retailers tend to operate and exist in technical and functional silos. Now, multi-channel experiences means that you have a retail space. Maybe you have a website with your brand and a company may be presented on YouTube, Twitter, or something like this. And they participate in some sort of a direct marketing, such as a mailer to the home, but they're not really connected. They're each basically looked at and viewed as separate entities. Now in cross-channel, which is what we'd like to aspire to for many companies, it's getting closer and customers do see the multiple touch points as sort of the same product. So a customer receives a mailer from a restaurant and looks at the menu online, and then they follow that up with a visit to the restaurant for lunch. But the retailer still has sort of a single view of the customer and operates sort of in functional silos. We want to try to do is get to omni-channel. This is the desired. The customer experience is an overall brand, not a channel with brands. Retailers leverage their single view of the customer in a coordinated and strategic way. 
Omnichannel experiences means that all sales are integrated into each other, providing your customer a seamless experience no matter which device they use to connect or interact with you. You can't say that your strategy is omni unless the channels are coordinated, integrated, and aimed at the same goal. So let's look at a few companies that are great examples of successful omnichannel. IKEA, just in case someone has never heard of IKEA, it's a Swedish brand of everything for the home from teapots to carpets to sofas, light bulbs, even curtains. Now, the first tiny brick and mortar store opened in 1943. But as of making this lecture, IKEA now has physical stores in 52 countries around the world. The company went online a long time ago. However, at first they only used online to present basically an online catalog to complement their annual printed ones. It was always a big deal when the IKEA catalog came out. Then in 2017, IKEA launched what they called an online shopping interactive catalog, as well as shopping virtual assistant web application. They developed much more than just an e-commerce store that contained a catalog, yeah, a number of buy buttons, and basically a checkout page. Now there's a gift registry app developed for taking into account that many of the younger people, IKEA's basic target audience, will want to shop for wedding and home gift ideas. There's also a planning tool for customers that are decorating their homes or apartment. IKEA has a rather large online and in-store customer service team on hand to help you and it's all free. IKEA also runs basic a blog slash form choke full of design ideas with entire projects that use only IKEA products. Moreover, the online catalog is linked to the brick and mortar stores. They're connected with an inventory management system because every product page shows the physical store nearby where that item is in stock or out of stock also, so a customer doesn't make a trip to a store and then get disappointed. Additional, IKEA is presented in all major social networks. They use Instagram feed to showcase design ideas that include product information. So you can easily locate them in their catalog. Finally, their mobile app is functionally extensive. It has shopping list app integrated, a barcode scanner for easier navigation in the physical store, a place you can register for the IKEA family club, special offers and online catalog. It even does a search by photo. Now the next company is Esty. You might think IKEA, well, that's a well-established business with a long history, so that's why it has a successful omnichannel. But IKEA was founded in 2005, so not so old. In case you don't know, SD is a marketplace that specializes in selling handcrafted items and antique materials. All the products there are unique, one of a kind, which makes SD, you know, as some people would say, is a black hole where you can get shopping there and never seem to come out. And yes, I've been trapped in that black hole myself. But unlike IKEA, SD started online and there isn't a single brick and mortar store. However, this doesn't stop them from building their very own omni-channel. And here's how they did it. First of all, there's a single website, a marketplace to be exact, where thousands of vendors can sell their own handcrafted goods. They're presented in various popular social medias with strong use of Instagram and Pinterest, both being excellent for showing off beautiful and inspirational products. You can go seamlessly from either of these social media sites right onto the website. If you like a product featured in a post or a pin, you can basically process straight to checkout. The customer really doesn't have time to think through their thoughts and buying is almost impulsive. Additionally, there's a smart mobile app that integrates the web marketplace tightly. The user's experience is smooth. The tone of the mobile app is somewhat calming and meditative, much like the rest of the SD channel. And the mobile app can become another black hole. But there's also large companies like Disney, which is so much more than just a movie and theme park business. It's a huge corporation that's famous around the world. Disney does have an official website, you know, home of all things Disney. In this website, you can find anything related to Disney cartoon characters, toys, computer games, theme songs, movies, but you can also access tickets to the most famous theme parks in the world and even book your Disney cruise. All of this is neatly categorized. 
Although they're located in one place, you do switch between official toy store to reserving tickets at the theme park, literally with a tap of the screen. What Disney has done well is navigation is smooth from any internet connected device. You can use your computer, your tablet, your mo mobile phone. Although online booking does take you to different website, the transition is super fast. And once you're at booking, not only can you reserve your tickets, but you can book a room, plan your whole trip, get special offers, even book restaurant reservations. And smartly, all of the online bookings can be linked to a special wristband or what's called a magic band. You can use this as a pass to the water parks or theme parks, a key to your hotel room, a credit card to pay for anything in the theme parks or on the cruise ships or at the hotels. You can link individual plans so that the kids, they don't buy like 10 Mickey ice creams and bust your budget. It is an omni channel system because the customer does not see any difference between them and Disney doesn't see any difference either. Jeff Bezos, of course, is the CEO of Amazon, has created probably one of the largest online retailers that we may see in our lifetime. He points out something very interesting, though, in this quote and something we have to remember that back in the physical world, if a customer walked into Walmart and had a bad time with it, they would go home and tell their friends, but it was a limited number. But today with online shopping and with online social media, if our customer has an unhappy experience, they're gonna go out and tell thousands of people, not because they can directly tell each person, but it'll get passed along and passed along and passed along. So the customer interaction with internet sites and with mobile and social interactions with the company have become much more important, you might wanna say, with the satisfaction than it has in the past. Because now, not only am I telling my local friends, but I may be telling my friends in other states and in other countries at the same time. Online marketing refers to marketing via the internet. For most companies, the first step in online marketing is to create a website. Most marketing websites are designed to interact with consumers to move them you know, closer to direct purchase or some other marketing outcome. But in contrast, there can be brand community websites. They don't try to sell anything, but present the brand content to engage the consumer in some sort of creative brand community. Now, a website should be easy to use and visually appealing. Now, ultimately, websites must be useful. So when it comes to website browsing and shopping, most people would prefer substance over style and function over flash. Online advertising refers to advertising that, ap that appears while consumers are browsing online. They can include display ads, search related ads, online classifieds, and all kinds of other forms. Now, the main forms of online advertising are display ads and search related ads. Online display ads might appear anywhere on an internet user's screen, and they're often related to information being viewed. Now, today's rich media ads incorporate animation, video, sounds, even interactivity. The largest form of online advertising is search advertising, or what they call contextual advertising. In this form of advertising, text-based ads and links appear alongside search engines results on sites such as Google, Yahoo, Bing. Now, email marketing refers to sending highly targeted, highly personalized relationship building marketing messages via email. When used properly, email can be the ultimate direct marketing media. But unfortunately, there is a darker side out there called spam. Basically, unsolicited, unwanted commercial email messages that drop into email boxes. Spam has produced consumers' irritation and frustrations to a large degree. To address these concerns, most legitimate marketers now practice what they call permission-based email marketing. You know, they basically send email pitches only to customers who opt in and give you an option to opt out. Another form of online marketing involves basically posting videos containing your brand's website or your brand itself. It can be on social media sites such as YouTube or Facebook. Now, some videos are made for the web and social media, while others are ads that the company made primarily for television or the movies and other medias, but post online before or after advertising campaign to extend the reach and the impact. 
Now, viral marketing is basically just a digital version of word of mouth marketing. All kinds of videos can go viral, producing engagement and positive exposure for the brand. However, marketers have little control over what becomes viral. I mean, they can seed content online, but that does little good unless the message itself strikes a chord with the consumers. For an example, in one simple but honest McDonald's video, the company answered an online viewer question about why McDonald's products look so much better in ads than in real life. What they did is they conducted a behind the scenes tour of how a McDonald's ad is made. This award-winning three and a half minute video pulled in almost 15 million views, earning the company praise also for its honesty and its transparency. Now, lastly, blogs or web blogs are basically online journals where people and companies post their thoughts and other content related to basically narrowly defined topics. Blogs can be about anything, politics, baseball, car repair, latest uh, television series, gaming. Now, most marketers now are tapping into the blogosphere as basically a medium for reaching their customer communities. Marketers can use insights from the customer's online conversations to improve their marketing programs also. Now, as a marketing tool, blogs offer some advantages. They can offer fresh, original, personal, and economic way to reach consumers' online conversations. However, blogs also offer disadvantages too. The blogosphere is basically cluttered and difficult to control. Although companies can leverage blogs to engage customers in meaningful relationships, blogs remain largely consumer controlled medium. Now, an example of a company blog is the creative Nuts About Southwest blog. It's written by Southwest employees and fostered to a dialogue that gives customers a look at an insight of the company's cultures and operations. It's kind of a nice one to check out. Social medias are independent and commercially online communities where people congregate to socialize and share messages, opinions, videos, pictures, other content. Marketers can engage in social media in two ways. They can use existing social media or they can set up their own. Using existing social media seems to be the easiest for most companies. Thus, most brands, large and small, have set up shops on the host of other social media sites. You know, Social media can also create what they call substantial brand communities. Niche social media caters to the needs of smaller communities of like-minded people, making them ideal vehicles for marketers who want to target specific special interest groups. Now, beyond these independent social medias, many companies have created their own online brand communities. For example, Nike's has something they call the Nike's Plus Runners community. Members join together online to upload, track, and compare their performances. Most large companies are now designing full-scale social media efforts that blend with and support their other elements of their brand's marketing strategies and tactics. More than making a scattering of efforts and chasing likes and tweaks, companies are using social media successfully, are integrating a broad range of diverse media to create basically brand-related social sharing, engagement, and customer communities. Firms that use social media effectively create brand-related social sharing, engagement, and customer communities. Now, using social media presents both an advantage and challenges. On the plus side, social media are targeting and personalizing, so they can allow marketers to create and share tailored content with individual consumers and consumer communities. Social medias are interactive. They make them ideal for sharing and participating in customers' conversation and listening to customer feedback. Social media is also immediate and timely. They can be used to reach customers anytime with a timely and relevant content regarding brand happiness and activities and any updates that might be needed to know. Social media can be very costly though. Although creating and administrating social content can be costly, many social medias are free or inexpensive to use. The biggest advantage of social media are the engagement and social sharing capacities. So social medias are especially well suited for creating customers engagement and community. But they also present some challenges. Most companies are still experimenting with how to use them effectively and results are kind of hard to measure. Social networks are largely user controlled. Marketers can't simply muscle their way into customers' digital interactions. They need to earn the right to be there. 
Rather than intruding, marketers must learn to become basically a valued part of the online experience by developing a steady flow of engaging content. Social media marketers juggle multiple channels, post types, and analytics every day. So the right suite of tools is critical for effective and efficient social media strategies. With so many different social media marketing tools, it can be tough to basically know what, which tools are right for the business and for the budget. It feels like there are a million of social media marketing tools out there, but basically they can be broken into three categories, social media management, listening, and analytics. These categories are most important for marketers because they're all about making your workflow more effective and efficient and data-driven instead of adding extra steps. Social media management tools help marketers streamline their work by categorizing the publishing to multiple channels. A strong social media management tool schedule posts and medias ahead of time across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other social media platforms. They have an editorial calendar. The best management tools also track incoming comments and DMs, surface uses generated content, and offer post approvals for large teams and more. Social media listening tools are critical for successful marketers who need to know exactly how their brand, product, industry, or clients are being talked about on social media and around the web. Top listening tools feature clear, up-to-date reports on brand mentions and conversations, as well as trending hashtags. These tools can also access sentiment to help you understand if conversations about your brand are trending in both a positive or a negative way. With the popularities of influencers on the rise, a strong social media listening tool can show who's shaping the voice of your brand online and identify new influencers who can make a difference to your bottom line. Now, every social media marketer needs clear, easy to use social media analytic tools to show what's working and what's not. The best social media analytical tools will feature public, you know, like engagements, impressions, and private, like reach and Instagram stories social data accessing across Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, all kinds of channels. These tools should show you how your competitors are performing so that you can see how your brand is performing on social right next to other content. The best analytical tools will also report on ad performance to help you make the most of your social media budget and will connect to apps like Google Data Storage or Excel for maximum flexibility in analyzing and presenting your social media strategies. Mobile marketing features marketing messages, promotions, and other content delivered to on-the-go consumers through their mobile devices. Marketers use mobile marketing to engage customers anywhere, anytime during the buying and building relationship process. Now, the widespread adoption of mobile devices and the surge in mobile web traffic have made mobile marketing a must for most brands. Retailers can use mobile marketing to enhance customer shopping experiences at the same time as they stimulate buying. Even though digital forms of direct marketing are busting onto the scene, traditional direct mail is still heavily used by most marketers. Now, direct mail marketing involves sending an offer, an announcement, reminder, some other item directly to a person at a particular address. Now, direct mail is well suited to direct one-on-one -on -one communication. It permits basically a high targeted market selectivity and can be personalized. It's flexible and it allows for really easy measurement of the results of your campaign. Although direct mail costs more per thousand reach than let's say television or magazines, the people it reaches are much better prospect for potential customers. Direct mail marketing offer offers some distinct advantages over digital form. It provides something tangible for people to hold on to, and it can be used for sending samples that basically digital marketing cannot. It can be an effective component of any broad integrated marketing campaign, but Direct mail also has a downside. It can be seen as junk mail if it's sent to people who have no interest in your company or your product. For this reason, smart marketers are targeting their direct mail carefully, so not to waste their money on people who basically aren't interested. They're designing permission-based programs that send direct mail only to those who want to receive it. 
Now, direct mail may also be some of the best ways for local businesses to reach their customers. In the older days, when we had landlines, we had something called the yellow pages. And so if a person wanted to know who the local plumber was, they could open up the yellow pages and see the ads. Today, there is no yellow pages. And if you go online to take a look at who the, the plumbers are, you may get plumbers from all around the area. But if you send a direct mail piece to people who you actually deal with in that area, many people keep those direct flyers. You also have to remember that there are many people who do not have smartphone technology, or they may not have that availability in their particular locations. While most people who are listening to this have broadband access and you don't think twice about it, there are also many rural communities that do not have broadband access, that don't have internet access. And so they are much more dependent on a more traditional method. Also, older consumers may be more dependent on an older method. And don't overlook older consumers the baby boomers still have a tremendous amount of money and lots of disposable income. And they're much more used to using a direct mail system perhaps to get information about current customers. We also have to remember that the older consumer may have some sort of vision problems. And so cell phones and things like this make it much more difficult for them to read because the print is small. They much prefer a direct mail piece that has a larger print on it and something again they can keep do not ignore direct mail. Advances in technology, along with the trend of personalization, one-to-one -one marketing have resulted in some exciting changes in the catalog marketing. Catalog marketing is basically a form of marketing through print, video, or digital catalogs that are mailed to selective customers or made available in stores or presented online. Now, we shouldn't overlook the traditional printed catalog. For one thing is they're quite often used in business to business and they offer pictures and something substantial again that one can hold on to. People still like to have something in their hand. Although perhaps for consumer-based products, they're not as useful as they used to be, but absolutely for business to business. Now with consumer-based products, there are still some catalog companies that are really successful. In fact, one of the neat things about catalogs is that they quite often stay around houses for a while. So something like Kimball's marketing um, and some of the other ones that have been pretty traditional, they send those out around Christmas time because people will sit there and thumb through them. They kind of enjoy the process of it. But the traditional catalogs like the Sears catalog or the JC Penney's catalog is gone a long time ago. Because basically with the internet, um, you have got a lot of advantages. And so with using online catal catalogs, you can have more customization and you can allow people to have that click through. So Ikea, again, which we discussed earlier, has this good combination of an online catalog, a print catalog, and also the in-store. So there may be sometimes when we're going to use all three to be able to link them together. Again, not something to ignore, but for most startups, basically an online catalog is probably going to be a better option for you. Now, telemarketers, most of us know, involves using a telephone to sell directly to the end user customer and also to our business customers. Generally, we look at in two types, our outbounds and our inbound calls. Now, the inbound calls is when somebody is calling in to receive an order that may be from a television print ad, catalog. They may also be calling in to find some sort of help or assistance. The outbound calls, though, is when we're calling customers. But in 2003, lawmakers established something called the Do Not Call Registry, which is managed by the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. Now, this supposedly legally bans companies from using telephone numbers that are registered in the call band. To overcome that, what companies have done is they've created what they call opt-in list. And so a customer may decide that they're interested in getting phone calls or emails and they can opt in to get those calls. Now, I can probably hear you right now saying, but I get calls all day long. Well, there's two reasons. One, that law basically is only to US companies. So anybody outside the United States isn't bound by that law. And also there are some legitimate 
groups of people that don't fall underneath this law, such as political campaigns, um, nonprofit organizations. And then there is, of course, the scammers. A lot of the phone calls that are received these days are actually not from real companies, but rather from people trying to scam people out of money, products, and all kinds of things. They use robots to basically just randomly make phone calls until they get somebody who picks up. The other one to talk about is something called direct response television marketing, which refers to direct marketing via the television, aka infomercials, and also a more exciting thing called iTelevision or interactive television advertising. While most students will tend to look down at those 3 a.m. infomercials, you need to understand that they work. Many products have started as infomercial and due to the demand have become regular store products. This is the type of pull strategy. I mean, next time you go to CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, you can probably find a section called as advertised on TV, which tends to feature some of the highest demand infomercial products that are out there. Now, in the 90s, this conceptual fantasies of shopping and browsing and navigating on demand interactive TV was everywhere. Everybody in marketing was talking about it. It seemed like the future was just around the corner, but ITV was still largely an unrealized dream. However, new technology has really started to bring this concept into reality. Now that people can link their credit card numbers to their Roco, Apple TV, and Fire Stick, the ITV concept is starting to become possible. Moreover, we found that customers that use voice activation systems such as Siri and Alexa view television very differently than those who have non-voice users. Now, links are now being created so that a customer can watch a show and then they can use their voice to order what they might be seeing. So it might be something like this. Alexa, order me that shirt Haley is wearing on modern TV in a medium. Now, during the 2019 Super Bowl, Kellogg's Pringle ran an ITV ad that allowed Roku and Apple viewers to skip to alternative versions of the ads and to purchase the product through their phones using the QR code. That's that little black square box with little dots in it. Now, as the lines continue to blur between television screens and other video screens, interactive ads and infomercials are appearing not just on television, but also on mobile, online, and social media platforms giving even more TV-like interactive direct marketing. I mean, if we start combining ITV with product placement, it'll become very effective marketing channels in the future. You know, as consumers have become more comfortable with digital and touch screens, technologies, companies are starting to place order machines and information machines in stores, at college campuses, airports, and many other locations. Now, the modern smart kiosk is now a wireless enabled. They can take your credit cards. Some machines even use facial recognition software that lets them basically guess gender, age, and make product re recommendations based on that data. Now, the Zoom systems create small freestanding kiosks called Zoom shops for retailers ranging from Apple and the Body Shop to Best Buy. So you see an example over here of one of the Best Buy ones, and there's a hundred of these Zoom shops all across the country, generally located in things like airports, military bases, college campuses, places that may be harder for people to actually get to the store, or where they may discover that they're missing something. They dispense things like media players, digital cameras, gaming console, headphones, phone chargers, all kinds of popular products. You also can see the Zoom shop here called the Nabesco Cube, and this one's actually physically located at the Barcelona airport. Then there are companies like Redbox that operate more than 40,000 DVD rental kiosks and supermarkets, fat food restaurants, and other locations. Their entire business is based on kiosks. So through this lecture, we sort of did an overview of both traditional and digital direct media. Both still have very important roles and futures here in the marketing areas. Neither one should be ignored. Neither one should be an only system. You need to use both a combination of both in order to reach your target market. It comes back down to, again, understand the need and fulfill it.